By this time, you will be ready to start firing guns at moving targets. First, with a BB machine gun at an indoor range, you will begin to learn how to aim ahead of your target if you want to hit it. Then, outdoors on the skeet range, with 12-gauge shotguns, tracking and leading the target will become instinctive. Your first experience firing a machine gun will be on the malfunction range. Something will at once go wrong with your gun. And you will be expected to figure out what is wrong each time your gun jams or stops firing. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll find the answer. You'll spend a few evenings cleaning and adjusting the guns that other classes fired during the day until you know a machine gun better than its mother does. When you fire these guns at aircraft or at surface vessels, you've got to be sure you're firing at an enemy. So you have to study enemy silhouettes and with aircraft, learn their wingspans so as to judge their distance from you by how much of your gun sight they fill. This is one of the most important things you must master here at school. Estimation of range. For instance, when the wings of a Messerschmitt 109 fill so much of your ring sight, the fighter is coming into range. But if this were a twin engine fighter with a bigger wingspan, he would be too far away to shoot at. Estimation of the range of an airplane, its apparent speed, and the right lead to give it are three of the four chief parts of accurate shooting. The fourth is harmonization of the gun with the sight. You sight your target along a straight line. Your bullet fired in the same direction will not fly straight. It will drop below the target. So the gun must be pointed up. Then the bullet will drop into the target. This process can be figured out by arithmetic for a given range. After you do the figuring, you can make a chart and line up the gun barrel with this disc and the sight with this mark. When you know how to do this, you can bore sight a gun and shoot it on the ground range. Point blank range and distant range. Fix targets by day to learn the effect of range and by night to learn how to use tracer ammunition. Then moving targets to learn how to estimate lead. Handheld guns and turret guns. Now you begin to look like a machine gunner. This is what you are here for, to fire guns, to kill. Now you're ready for your first flight. You take your life vest and your parachute and your goggles and helmet with earphones. And when you look like this, you climb into an airplane and take off in flights for the aerial target range. On the range, you will fire at a target towed by another aircraft. The target will first go at the same speed as your airplane at different ranges. Then your airplane will go faster than the target, and then slower. You will cross below the target and then above it to test your judgment of lead, range, and speed. But this air firing won't take up all your time. The rest of the day, you can practice turret maintenance and gun installation. Back in the classroom for further study, you must learn visual signals needed for communication with blinkers in international Morse code. In a darkened projection room, entertaining trainers are used to improve your shooting at moving aircraft targets shown on a screen. This will give you good practice and a lot of fun finding out how to lead a fighter coming in for an attack. At the end of your course, you will fly in formation. 
to practice gunnery control and gunnery tactics. Two AT-12s, upper green quarter, 1,000 yards. All gunners on target. Attack closing, range 800 yards. Stand by for left turn. This is only make-believe, for practice. But when you have learned it, when you have learned your academic work, when you have scored high enough on ground and air targets, when you have passed your final examination and received your gunner's wings, then it will not be make-believe anymore. Then the success of a mission will depend on you. Then you will have to be good. You will have to be a gunner. Whether you will be or not is up to you. In the next few short weeks here,